at that point, he was the one that wanted to have the babies. I'm like, well, at least, at least when I tell him, he's going to be happy about it. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't happy. He wasn't unhappy. He just, you know, it just didn't go how I thought it was going to go. <laughs> you thought he was going to be ready to settle down more so? Or? No, I didn't think he was going to be ready to settle down because, I mean, he was 24 year old. Not settle rock down, star, but, you know, but become more serious with you? No. no? I mean, okay. he, he, he had expressed wanting to be serious from the beginning. Um, I just thought that maybe the, the on again, off again was going to be le less. Like, okay. you know, like, the highs were very high. The lows were very low. Mm -hmm. um, but what I, one thing, you know, that I realized, and we've even discussed this, you know, as time progressed, um, you know, being that young and being at the pinnacle and the peak of his career, um, I think that he decided that I'm somebody he wanted to keep in his life, but not at that time because he wanted to go do whatever he wanted to do. Mm. So I think for him, that was like, whoop, great. And you weren't a woman who could just be like, listen, I understand you're a rapper. You're at the top of your career. You can fuck other girls. I'm just going to like ignore it. Yes and no. I think at that time, I would not have been open to a relationship like that. Okay. But I think we could have definitely been more cordial to like where we had gotten years after, like, Again, I you, you're he was a 24 year old rapper at the peak of his career. So, not saying that I don't re deserve or respect, you know, absolute loyalty. But like, let's be real here. Like, it's a respectful way to do things. A respectful way to handle things. And you know, one thing he would do, I say we would be, you know, on rodeo shopping or you know, family time or just hanging out, he'd be at the house and, you know, just, just doing everything. And I mean, having the time of our lives, he would have a show. I would drop him off at the airport. He would land and some random girl would pick him up from the airport and he'd be on her camera throwing up gang signs and da, 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 just like, you're not even trying to be discreet about it. Right. And then shade room will post it. Oh yeah. And then I would hit him like, what the fuck? And he wouldn't say anything. And the next day it would be a different city, a different girl and more gang signs. And then it get posted <laughs> again. And the next city, another girl. And like you left three days, I dropped you off at the airport and you, and you haven't said a word to me in those three days. No, no text, nothing, nothing. Ignore me completely. Wow. Then day five, day four, Pop up back at the house. And just expect to Walk, to walk the in. Holy shit. Drop a, a stack of money on the counter and be like, oh, babe, I had a long weekend. <laughs> it's kind of badass, though. What? <laughs> Admit it. It's kind of badass. And, like, <laughs> for me at that time, I'm like, are you shitting me? Right. I'm going to count this money that you just put on the counter, but are you shitting me? But, like. I think just being that young and that powerful and that wealthy, mm. he just didn't know yeah. how to handle things. Like we didn't have to be in a relationship to still co-parent and just, you know, be adults. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, mm. man, the stories I could tell that I won't. Jesus. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. But okay. So after that though, how long were you single doing the single mom thing? And what was it like uh, dating in that? I mean, um, so up until Kari was about three, almost four, uh, we were on and off, mm -hmm. on and off. Um, you know, I, I dated a little here and there, but my priority is always my daughter. So I'm not one of those people that have men around my kid. Um, you're not pulling up at my house. I'm not coming to your house. So for me, like, I would kind of entertain like an ex-boyfriend or something or, you know, somebody that I felt like was worth the time because I just always, I, I'm such a mom, mm -hmm. you know? So for a long time, um, I didn't really, you know, do all the things that I would normally want to do. Mm. Um, because it's like, how far can this really go? You know, I don't see you as a stepdad. So <laughs> unless you're possessing those qualities, and then I'm with my kid all the time. I'm not going to be running in the streets without her. And you're not going to be around my kid if I don't feel like 
you're in, you know, so dating was interesting. It's a tricky role. It's a tricky role. A lot of these like uh, men's rights, like uh, red pill type podcasts, like the way <laughs> they talk about single moms just comes off so mean to me. And as, it's so weird because most of their moms are those. Right. And I mean, I get it. Like, I understand that it definitely is like a very big decision to start dating a woman seriously who already has kids. You know, it's like, it's just like you kind of have to be at the point in your life where you're ready to you know, take on some small percentage of the responsibility that being a dad is realistically, if you're going to get serious, it's just going to become more and more like they're your kids as you spend more time with them. But it just feels so like shitty to just like talk about them the way that some of them do. And I realize that I'm only saying this probably because I'm in the state where I could imagine like my wife being in that position Uh if something were to happen to me or if, if, if it didn't work out, whatever. And it's just like, I don't know, it just feels so shitty to kind of talk about single moms like that. You know what I've know. I've noticed just in my personal experience and with a lot of my friends. Um I can't say never, but I've I've never personally experienced a man that was like, "Oh, you have kids? Bye." Really? You know, and and I've always like Beyoncé said, I'm everybody's type. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously, um I've been married for almost 3 years now, but like before that like I've always been approached by very affluent men and the garbage men too. Pretty you know privilege. Talk to us about pretty privilege. What's it like? <laughs> I mean, what do you want to know? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying it's like a, that clearly probably like colors your um, life story in a way when you're like, Oh, like guys treat me like a certain way throughout my life because I'm assuming you looked pretty good when you were 18 or whatever. You know, too, okay, right? this, this is what I will say. I'm not going to, I'm not going to act like it does not exist. I'm not going to try to be like, oh, it's not, you know, no, pretty privilege is a thing and I use it mm. to my full advantage as much as I possibly can. I, I, could, I absolutely do. Yeah. I feel like, you know, Marilyn Monroe said it takes a smart brunette to play a dumb blonde. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I've had people be like, oh, you're too, you're too pretty to use your looks. You're, you're, are you stupid? No, that, I'm smart. Mm. You use what you got to get what you want to a certain extent. Yeah. Now, now, I'm not going to exploit myself to the pl- to the point where it becomes you know something else. But th- at the end of the day, like we know, men are physical beings. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times where you may they may be interested because of how you look, but your brain or your ability or your mouth will close the deal. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of rooms and, and doors that open for me or places that I got into because I was the unassuming pretty girl. Like, oh, sh- she's pretty, but she don't know shit. Mm-hmm. And then they found out, oh, it speaks. Oh, it thinks. Oh, it's smart. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I've, I've been approached by, you name them, all the blue checks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and all the blue collar workers. Right. You know? Um, so n- nothing really surprises me or impresses me or, you know, anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 a, I don't know. It's a thing. It's a thing. Right. I mean, it's just like, as a woman, you have this sort of like passport that can get you wherever you want to go. If you look a certain way. True. Very true. And, you know, it's just kind of crazy because it's like, Women just can do that, but they also are kind of potentially sacrificing some amount of reputational damage that they might be doing, especially if it becomes this public thing. You know, men have the same password if they have money. True, true. So a lot of doors that I can get in because of how I look, you can get in because of you can pay for it. Yeah, you know but it took a lot of work to get to that point. Whereas yeah. uh, you've had that superpower presumably since you were very young. Right? Yes and no. Yes and no, because I've seen pretty that ain't put together. Right. Okay, and, and that's and and that's country pretty, and mm-hmm. and that's cool. That's unrefined pretty, and that's fine too. But like, there's certain places that you know you need, sweetie. You have to use a pearl spoon for the caviar. Mm-hmm. Like, see, I wouldn't know that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> there's certain places, you know. So it, it's it, it is different categories of it too, you know. And then again, a lot of times you may be in the room because you're pretty, but that don't keep you in the room. Oh, or no, if it does not, keep yeah. you in the room, you may be in, in a different spot in that room. You may be in the bed in the room. Right. You know? So pretty is the introduction, but are you intelligent? Can mm-hmm. you hold the conversation? Do you know what the hell you're talking about? Right. You know, is there is there something else outside of that? And some people care about that. Some people don't. Right. You know, I just want people to start to, to stop trying to vandalize women who are pretty that are with affluent men 
It's not like she tackled you and beat you down. The affluent men that look like King Koopa or or <laughs> or God knows what a, a villain, they're going after the pretty women. You know, I heard Irv Gotti, he was on a podcast, and I was just sitting there like, are you mad? What, the way he was talking about Ashanti? Oh, God. Or are you talking about something else? I wasn't even talking about that, but oh, that okay. was... It, that was what Men used to deny the stuff he was making jokes of. Right. And I like just kind of laughing about victimizing and womanizing and misogyny and making a joke of it. Like that was gross, but that wasn't even what I was to, that's a whole different topic. Okay. But he, it was like maybe a week or two ago and he was saying something about how he, I don't know how old he is, but I think he was, I think he's like 52 ish or something. And, um, he, he was saying how he was dating a 25 year old Dominican girl. He couldn't believe she wanted $25,000 for him. You just said that you're dating this beautiful, drop dead gorgeous, twenty five year old girl who is m- m- more than half of your age. Uh-huh. I don't know if he has kids, but you, you can you if you do or don't, your child could be older than her. You're with her because she is beautiful and supple and young. You have the audacity to be using her for her youth and her body and her looks, and you said you couldn't believe she asked for twenty five thousand dollars. Well, I mean, these are negotiations. Maybe he's already given her her stipend for the month, right? Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It was just it was just the way he was so appalled. Mm. But what if she said on a podcast, yeah, this old 52-year-old washed up man who used to have the audacity to ask me to sleep with him. I need everybody to check out NoJumber.com. We officially started a blog. It has in-depth articles about current events, music, et cetera, plus all of our content in terms of podcasts, interviews, et cetera. And you can get some exclusive new merch if you check out NoJumber.com. So make sure you tap in.